Oh, 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 oh my God. What? What's happening? Oh my God, Salim. What? It's February. We just slept no. through the whole winter. No way. Oh my God, it's time for spring. Oh, we have to start the prep. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, <sighs> Whew, that was a nice nap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to our winter episode. I'm mimicking you, sorry. Salim, what have you noticed that is different from this winter, from last winter? Oh my god, the huge, huge, huge difference is the amount of work. Uh, we did the first year for the whole installation, and uh, this winter was literally like holy days from the garden. And it makes sense, because like we said in our in our first season videos, uh, there was a lot of soil work we had to do that you only want to do once, right? You want to disrupt that soil structure, but then you just want to give it time to form and build life and build structure. And so like, we don't need to re-broad fork everything. We've already done it. Exactly. Also, all the planting of the perennials, you do it just once. Because uh, they're perennials, which yeah. means they live forever. We have immortal plants growing back here. They will never die. The only way is to chop their head with the... Yeah, or stake through the heart. No, no, Highlander is just jumping. Oh, Highlander? I was going by vampire. You're going by Highlander rules? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not vampires. You know, the only way to kill an artichoke is to put a stake through its heart. Though we did do some things this winter. Yes. And that's what we're going to present to you uh, in this video. Yeah, so uh, although we didn't do a lot of work this winter, we did harvest some really wonderful uh, winter hardy vegetable. All of those leafy greens, you know, like kale and chard and spinach, those grow great in winter. Uh, so does the brassicae or brassicase. I never know which one it is. So do the brassicas, uh, like, <laughs> like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. We've grown a bunch of those and eaten those and they're really wonderful. We have this beautiful geometric broccoli that grew this year that was just like, yeah, like uh, old fractals and stuff. Yeah, it was like almost too pretty to eat, but we still, we ate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible when you have a vegetable garden like this, how many people you meet, how many inter interesting people, interesting connection uh, you make. This winter, we met an amazing woman uh, named Maria, and she has alpacas at home, and she's doing... Um, alpaca therapy, it's really amazing. And we made the alpacas, they're so cute. And they had a lot of alpaca poop, which is an amazing manure because it doesn't burn the plant. And she gave us a lot of this manure for the, uh, for the garden. That is so generous. Honestly, the idea that people would be willing to give us poop for free is just like, that is the spirit. Thank you of guys, thank you. Permaculture. Yeah. So unfortunately, we stopped using it because after making some research, even if they say uh, a lot on the internet that it's safe to use the alpaca poop, it could still uh, vehiculate some pathogens if we use them raw like this directly in the garden. Uh, and I didn't want to take any risk with that. So we technically need to compose them before for like a few months, which would need require space and we don't have that space unfortunately so we stopped using it but we still are friends with the alpacas that's what's really yeah, yeah it's so, so we cute. still go visit them we play with them they're so really cute. fun so this was our first winter planting like a, a large amount of things we planted a lot of leafy greens and we discovered really quickly that our pests changed between spring and summer and winter. Uh, this winter, we had a lot of slugs. Slugs were like one of the banes of our existence here because we would plant these wonderful little spinaches in the ground and they would just get eaten right off the bat. They wouldn't even have a chance to grow. Um, we don't mind sharing a little bit of our greens with some of nature, but if they don't even have a chance to grow, then we have nothing. We can't share anything. So uh, we knew we didn't want to kill the slugs. That was important, but we wanted to send them a message <laughs> to get the hell out of our garden. <laughs> <laughs> so we left a dead horse head in yeah. the bed and then they were like, ah, mafia. And you just they... say we don't kill. Yeah, but it was a horse head that the horse volunteered his head. 
So we sent the slugs a message. That's what's important. Get out of our garden. No, uh, so rather than killing the slugs, most solutions on the internet are to kill these slugs. Uh, our solution was how do we keep them off of our plants long enough for the plants to grow uh, really big and hardy so that then even if they eat some, there's still a lot of plant left over for us, right? Uh, so our solution was to create these domes. Uh, they are very simple to make. We'll probably include some instructions uh, in a future video for how we did it. But essentially you just fabricate them out of chicken wire and white thermal cloth. The, the chicken wire is what gives it the structure and the thermal cloth, cloth gives it coverage so that the slugs and other things can't get in. We also found this worked really well against our rats. So they actually kept a lot of our greens healthy from our rats who've been snacking away at some of our stuff. Uh, and we just take those domes and we would kind of like dig them into the ground uh, and let the plant kind of grow inside. And when it seemed like they had reached a pretty mature level, we would take the domes off. And then it was honestly unbelievable. You would take the dome off and you would just see these huge leaves just unfolding from the inside. They were so healthy and so hardy and just like ready to greet the world. Uh, yeah. So that was awesome. They were hardy enough. So the slugs won't attack them anymore, but uh, the rats made a, had a very great meal. Yeah. After that. We need to send a message to the rats. Yeah. We're sending a message to the rats. No more horse now heads. Now it's going to be a donkey. It's a donkey head? Yeah. We're going to put the head of a donkey. Or a zebra. A zebra head. They'll be so confused. They'll be like, I got to get out of this garden. So during the summer, this is fantastic. We have light everywhere. Everything grows super happy. Uh, but... During the winter, because we have a hill uh, on our south, we have also a lot of trees at the neighbors. So there is a lot of uh, shade projected on our garden. And the beds here receive just a little light uh, during the day. So for instance, uh, you can notice in the south end of the bed how it's less lushy and the garlic lush, is shorter. Lush. 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 Okay. <laughs> I don't know why, I want to say lushy. So, for instance, you can notice on the south end of the bed how it's less lush and how the garlic is shorter uh, compared to the north side of the bed that is way more lush and the garlic is way higher and happier. Just because we had more light here uh, throughout the winter. So that is what we have been up to for the last four months, uh, but we are now getting ready for the really big, exciting work we're gonna do this spring and this summer to bring uh, a bunch of new vegetables and plants back to this garden. We're gonna do new things this season that we didn't do last season. Uh, some of the stuff we're working on now, we're gonna have episodes about. Uh, we are building a rainwater catchment system. We are repurposing a space and uh, plant a lot of native drought plant that's gonna attract a lot of pollinators and beneficials. We also uh, removed uh, concrete pavers in one part of our front garden, and that is now a great blank slate for us. The soil is super compact. It is not bursting with life at this moment. It has been covered by concrete for the last 20, 30 years, but it's such a cool opportunity for us to be able to work there and use permaculture to reintroduce life into that soil, to reintroduce fertility, and to get some cool stuff growing there. We're not gonna say what, we could grow anything, Maybe it's vegetables, maybe it's fruits, maybe it's hamburgers. Uh, we're gonna present you the wicking beds and also how we gonna protect them this year against the rats. Yeah, and if you're like, what's a wicking bed? Good question. We didn't really talk about them last year. Yeah, if you think, if you're asking what's a wicking bed, sorry I interrupt you, but just go Google it. As we did, what? We're gonna do all the work? Go Google it. Yeah. You don't need this series, just go Google go. stuff. And we're gonna have uh, probably an entire episode about our efforts to help manage our, our friends in the garden, what some might call pests, our rats, our slugs, all of the little animals that come and take some of our food. Uh, and maybe if we're lucky, we're gonna try to attract our own owl. Fingers crossed for that. That's so exciting. Because owls are so cool. They're the smartest animals. They wear glasses and they give you Tootsie Rolls. And many other things, guys, so. Yeah, so stay tuned. This is gonna be an amazing season. Everything is bigger this season. We've got more gardening space, more plants and vegetables, better camera, <laughs> better audio, more people, better people. We're gonna replace us with better people. Yes. That, 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 that's not doable, I'm sorry. You don't think so? I think we could find some better people. No, we are perennial. We're, we're perennials, we're gonna eternal. live forever? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. we're yeah. immortal. Yeah. <laughs> Hey.
hey, Salim, would you do something for me after this? You're going to make a pun? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm hoping that you can do me a fava. Like a favor? Fava? Um...